Fish Baby Daddy here talking about hard water and soft water. Let's figure it out together. Okay, so when I'm looking at these different tanks and I'm thinking about, hmm, do I have hard water or soft water in here? What do I really need? It really depends on what you're looking to grow. And so if you look at these guys right here, I got some little uh, dwarf cars that are growing and developing. So they need some little bit of harder water. And then you look at the Anubias that are in this, in this tank. And sometimes Java Moss responds a little bit better to a little bit harder water. So I'm gonna put a little bit more harder water in here get, to get them to develop and grow. Now, if you look at this tank down here, you can't really see too much right now because they're kind of hiding, weaving in and out. They got some eggs in here and they're about to hatch. Now, this is much softer water. This is for a South American um, Ivana Acara binoculata. These are kind of rare fish, but they really like really, really super soft water. So I'm gonna put them in with a lot more softer water. Have a couple of Amazon frog bait at the top to help kind of stabilize the water. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. So that's more softer water for the tank. Now in this tank, I got mini snowball plecos. And these guys really like really soft water too. So I'm just trying to keep them, keep those little caves going, good water transfers, and hopefully I can get those guys to breed. But they like softer water. In this tank, I got a combination of two different fish. I got the dwarf cars. I'm trying to get a male and female to breed. But I also got some mega clown plecos that are in those caves that are hiding. My hope is, is that I can get either one of them to actually spawn, which will get the other one in the mood to spawn too with the hormones. So I got them in soft water. So you're seeing a the theme. I got a lot more softer water fish, but I also have a mixture of some harder water stuff too. And I'll check that out here next. Now, if you look at this, this is a planet tank. And predominantly, most planet tanks want softer water. But the Anubias, the Anubias Petite, the smaller leaves, they like a little bit more harder water. So I put a mixture of soft and hard in there to accommodate both plants. So I got a little bit of mixture of both in there. But predominantly, most planet tanks respond to softer water. In this tank in here, I got some plecos and I'm trying to get them to breed. And you can see there's a combination of a bunch of different plants. I got some pennywort, Brazilian pennywort at the top, wisteria, and I got some, some waster tang here. I got some java moss also growing on the wood here. But the leopard frog plecos, I'm trying to get them to breed, get them in softer water. But the goal is too with the plants, it kind of helps stabilize the water too. And we'll talk about what that actually means here in a second with KH and GH and PH. Now you can't see it in here right now, but I have some balzani that are in here, gymnogeophagus balzanis. And what I'm trying to do is get those guys to breed. They're kind of hiding in the rocks right now. I try to give them a little bit of display of the sand so they can actually sift through the, the sand for their food. But they're actually trying to stay a little bit away from everything out of the open space. Because I just did a big water change. They're trying to figure out what's going on. Again, plants in here are helping stabilize. Amazon frog bit at the top. And I just got a ton of java moss in here binding with the wood and the rock. Then finally in here, I got a 75 gallon, and what I have in here is a turquoise severum. He's, I call him my Peco severum because I got him from Peco, and he looks fantastic with color. I know Peco sometimes gets a bad rap, but I was lucky and got a really good one. I was able to take care of her, and she's actually growing really, really well. The reason you can tell it's a female is because in between the eyes, there's really not a lot of pattern of color, and that actually gives me the indication that she's a female. And I also have some dwarf car growing out here. And I have a couple plecos in here, royal pleco, a high fin green phantom pleco, a snowball pleco. You can't see them though because they're hiding right now. But that's predominantly a softer water tank too. And these fish respond where to that softer water. So what I did was I wrote down some notes and I was trying to think to myself, what can I, how, what's the best way to describe hard water and soft water? And so what I want to think about is, is that you want to think about a couple different things. With hard water, you have high pH, high GH, and high KH. With soft water, it's the exact opposite. You want low pH, low GH, and low KH. And think of rainwater as being more geared towards low pH, low GH, low KH. Sometimes almost no GH and no KH in rainwater. So when we're thinking about softer water, we're thinking, all right, why is this important? 
Think of GH as like your minerals, your minerals that are in the water. Minerals will help development of fry and help development of actually getting juvenile fish to grow better. Think of KH in any type of water. Think of it as how does it stabilize? Does it stabilize the water? So think of carbonates as your hard components and think of your hydrogen molecules as something that's more acidic. And what you want to do is you want to have that all stabilized in the water so your pH doesn't crash. If your pH crashes, now we have unstabilized water, your, fi your fish are going to die. So things to think about. So particularly to breeding in soft water, you want your pH to actually be relatively lower. And what responds to that is, is that you have lower GH and lower KH. Those properties help allow the sperm to fertilize the eggs. So if you have too high of alkaline water and you have soft water fish, you're never going to be able to breed them. Okay, so how are you going to test your water to figure out what you have and what you don't have? What I like using is these API test kits. These test kits are really good, they're really reliable, and I'm testing my GH, my KH, my pH, and I'm also testing my TDS, which is my total dissolved solids. What's the total amount of everything that's in my water? And that's that meter right there. I can get that off of Amazon really cheap. It only costs about $15. So those are the three things you really need to actually test your water. All right, so if you think about it, the first thing you need to think about before you think of GH, KH, pH, all that, you need to think about what's coming out of your tap. So I'm just showing you my sink here, and I've actually got it set up because my tap is really, really hard water. In fact, it's so hard, it'd probably be really good for African cichlids. So what do I need to do? I need to transition that hard water into soft water. And the best way to do that is with a part portable RO system. So I have this five-stage RO system that I have hooked up to my sink. And then what I'm doing is I'm feeding that into a bucket, a big bucket, in fact, probably a brute bucket, it's about 55 gallons. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have almost no KH, no GH or pH in the water, or the pH is gonna be really, really low, around 6.0. And so that's great for some fish, but you need to get some minerals back into the water, like I said, or else nothing's gonna develop. And here's just a feed of actually the water going from the tap after it's gone through the, the RO system, now it's going into this big bucket, it's about 55 gallons. And what's happening is you see a slow little bit of drip of water. And after probably about 12 hours, I got this whole bucket filled up. And so the idea is this is pure RO water. So what I have now is I have another bucket that's on the other side of the room, and I actually put the RO water in here. But what I also do to counter that is I'll put some shrimp mineral GH and KH powder into the water. And I can actually measure how much I'm actually putting in there with the TDS meter. And I can actually just dip that into the water and I can actually see how much I actually want to put in there. So the idea is, is that you want to be able to put a certain amount of minerals with KH and GH so you have something for development and you just don't have just RO water. Because RO water itself is not going to be able to give you the minerals and the development and the fish. And you need to have some cage in the water to help stabilize it. Or also, otherwise, it's just going to completely crash. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you I tested some water with the TDS meter. If I put that in, you can see it's at 255. That's relatively hot, but I had a lot of tap water in here. 255 showing. So 255 is a little high, but that's good for the development of the fish. And it's also good for the development of the Anubias because Anubias likes harder water. I'll take that out. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into a much softer water tank. And you can see that it's at 94. So that's much softer in this tank right here. And that they're gonna respond better to a lower TDS softer water but again i do have a little bit of minerals in there if i get that number below 50 that can kind of be the danger zone i could potentially run into a problem maybe have an unstabilized tank so 94 is not bad i go 90 50 to 94 and i'd probably be in good shape but that's softer water that's going to help actually fertilize the eggs because it's softer i know i was talking about tds i kind of just wanted to break that down into 
What is TDS? It's your total dissolved solids, which are your organics and inorganics that are in the water. And that can consist of metals, minerals, salts, ions, and what I would consider relatively soft water that's safe, that you don't have to worry about you know, water getting destabilized or at all, is around 50 to 120 parts per million. So I'd say that's soft. And if you're testing your water and it's um, relatively hard, I would say it's at 300 to 400 parts per million. I would say that's a harder water. So we got these concepts that people talk about in terms of manufacturing water. And really what that comes down to is, is that you're just taking out some things out of your water and trying to add things back in. So like if I'm taking water out of the tap because it's really too hard for what I'm trying to do, I'm using an RO system and then I'm adding back in a little KH and GH, which will help me give me some minerals, help stabilize the water a little bit. And that would be claiming... I kind of roll my eyes, manufacturing water. It isn't like I'm actually creating hydrogen and oxygen molecules and fusing them together. All we're doing is we're trying to actually get the parameters right uh, to help with softer water fish. And you don't want to put softer water fish in hard water because typically your softer water fish are from South America. And what happens is, is that they're usually swimming through rivers that have like literally nothing in them. So they're trying to absorb anything they possibly can to survive and thrive down there. And if you have too much of something that they're not used to, they're not gonna usually do too well in harder water because they're just not used to that. And on the flip side, if you've got more uh, alkaline-based fish, which are in Africa, that require a much harder water and you put them in softer water, they're not going to respond very well because typically that pH is going to be way too low for them and they're going to die. And you, and you certainly do not want to mix continents. You don't want to mix soft, uh, South American fish with African fish or vice versa because one of them is not going to get along with each other, one. And number two, the water parameters are not nearly going to be close to help them survive. And you're going to end up with disease and both fish are, are, are not going to make it or one of the other is not going to make it. And it just doesn't result in something really that well. So I think the biggest thing you want to think about when you're looking at well, what type of fish do I want? The first thing you got to think of is I got to check my tap water because I got to figure out what kind of tap do I have? Do I have really soft water? Well, then I'm probably more prone to actually getting South American fish, which would be ideal, make it easier on you. Or if you got harder water like myself, maybe you're more prone to getting African cichlids in that case, in that situation. And naturally, they're going to respond better to that tap. Or you can do what I'm doing with, with having hard water, and I'm trying to find a way to actually soften that water so I can get a better outcome having South American fish. So I think the, proper, the properties you got to think about first off is, all right, what do I have? And the way you got to do that is by testing it. And the best way to test that is with those API test kits, having a TDS meter, and then moving from there. And then you can evaluate what you want to do. Well, that kind of wraps it up for the hard water, soft water episode. I hope that helps a little bit, makes a little more sense. And until next time, Fish Baby Daddy.